Hello everyone, it's Rose and Carter doing the job on Wednesday. It's uh, Wrestling Show Day. Um, my pick this week, I chose Wrestling Challenge, WBF, uh, that ran from 1986 to 1985 as a replacement to All Star TV from the WWF, WWF before that, wasn't it? That went from 1971, so that had like 15 years, and then 86 to 95 it was Challenge. Um, proper enjoyed it, right? Good, it was like 45 minutes, I suppose, by the time we set the adverts out, and it an hour show, mm. yeah, yeah. It, it went in seconds, you know, it, it everything about it was entertaining, you know, yeah, was, yeah. talking and shit, but it was talking about stuff that you knew about, and you cared about, so yeah, um, really, anyway, yeah, there was a lot of talking in my one, but it was good because it was kind of building up to like a big event and a couple of events actually there was a on my one they were building up to wrestlemania 8 and they were also building up to like a boston garden show so they kept going talking about both shows coming up yeah this was exactly the same this was a build to wrestlemania 3 and uh a show locally that they read the card out for and then they interview people for that particular card and fucking out we should go to this fucker because it's about him um shall i do the first i think you're um i think your volume's a bit funny. It, I don't know. You sound a bit echoey. I don't know. Is that better? I think so, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, shall I go first? Because I did 87. Uh, yeah. Um, Gorilla and Bobby Heenan are hosting it. So already, you know, you're fucking going to have a good one. Because there ain't no better, you know, commentary team than that, is there? Yeah. Like, nowhere in the world. They, they... they... They done mine as well, so yeah, fucking brilliant. Like the, the minute they're on the screen, you're like, we're all right now, we're safe. You, you hooked, didn't you? Mm. Um, and it goes to the titles, and this was his sex, uh, sexy saxophone music. Match a man, fucking doing that. Um, which proper took me back, right? Because that was the, you know, when it started on. Late night ITV in the middle of the night, fucking two in the morning. I used to tape. That was the fucking, that was the, um, you know, the theme to it. So that took me back. Um, Gorilla announces who's going to be on the show and there's going to be WrestleMania 3 information. We go straight to the ring. Like, no messing, no fucking about. First match already in the ring's Chick Donovan versus uh, Ricky Steamboat. Ricky Steamboat, we know how capable he is. Chick Donovan, much as he's enhancement here, he's fucking, you know, he fine reputation. Um, there's a fucking proper ovation for Steamboat. Like, right? they go fucking nuts for him. Bob, Bobby Enon, um, Gorilla says, listen to the ovation for um, Ricky Steamboat. And Bobby Enon says, no, that's for Chick Donovan. <laughs> fucking pop me. Um, this was a proper good match, like, and, and a, a good time in it as well. It wasn't like your standard fucking TV superstar against fucking no name. Um, you know, clearly from respect from Chick Donovan. Uh, Chick starts real well. It's fucking arm dragging and wrist locking and arm exchanges and shit. Uh, Chick is in charge for most of the first part of the match. Uh, right until this like run spot where he sort of loses his ass and then gets fucking hip tossed. Ricky Steamboat start, you know, proper fucking high hip toss. Um, Chick Donovan takes over again. There's a Kamala promo on the screen, you know, that comes up on the little screen separate. Oh, yeah. Why, why there's a Kamala promo in the middle of a Ricky Steamboat match? Fuck knows. But yeah. Kamala is featured quite a bit in little spots and talks and and stuff, but he wasn't at WrestleMania 3. No, I was, I was going to say that. W was he part of the company then, then? Or? Like, at WrestleMania 3, though, you know, when the when the show was, was he, like, part of them? It's only, this is Feb, from February of 87, the end of February 87, like, because they're on about fucking three weeks to WrestleMania, which was nigh on the end of March, wasn't it? So, it's very strange. Because they're pushing him big time. 
Was he what? any? Was he fucking? Was he on any early WrestleManias? No. No, it wasn't, was he? That's not weird. Until, you know, not until his next run, like, was it? Yeah. And it, it'd have been a fucking... It'd have been a good a good fucking, you know, a good name for, like, one of the manias. Like, you know. Weird, though, isn't it? I think it's very strange. For him to be pushing him this big and not to be part of the, you know... They're pushing WrestleMania. They're pushing... The matches for WrestleMania and they're pushing Kamala in the fucking local promos that they do for that show that we spoke about. You know, when they talk about an upcoming local show. And he's right in the like fucking the steamboat match at WrestleMania was in essence the semi main event, wasn't it? Yeah. So right in the middle of the semi main event as WrestleMania match, they've got a Kamala promo. Fucking hard. Whatever the fuck, uh, what the Grand Wizard, the, not the Grand Wizard, the Wizard, wasn't it? The fucking Prince Iakea that managed, um, not Prince Iakea, King, King Curtis Iakea. Prince <laughs> Iakea, which is a W dude, wasn't he? Um, right. What he said during this promo, I have no fucking idea. It was just waffle, but that's kind of the gimmick, isn't it? Um, I'm proper surprised how much Chick Donovan had in this match, right? but it was fucking brilliant. There was a great spot. Fucking never seen anything like it before or since. Chick Donovan's whipped to the ropes. And, you know, you, you, you Steamboat didn't sleep. He didn't baseball slide him through the legs or anything. He just dropped down. like He, he almost baseball slide, slid. But as Chick Donovan came back, you know, he went to his right. And he was like, where the fucking hell is he done? You know, like that. It was oh, really yeah. on. Worked fucking perfectly. And then was met with a fucking big fuck off chop. Uh, there was a backdrop, a slam, a drop kick, um, and a backbreaker, which looked like a shoot, but it's wrestling, isn't it? Um, it it's all steamboat now, but he slows it down, headlock. Um, Chick Donovan tries a whip, steamboat holds on. Uh, there's a big back suplex from Chick Donovan, steamboat through thrown out the ring to the floor and then Donovan gets out and throws him back straight away which confused me a little bit um why throw him out if you're not gonna fucking if you're just gonna throw him back in again <laughs> um then Steamboat's thrown out the other side uh there's a slam attempt Steamboat goes over the top and then Steamboat slammed on the hooks Chick Donovan slammed on the floor so there's a little more out there this time back in the ring goes Chick Donovan up goes Steamboat. Top rope crossbody was the uh, pin. Fucking brilliant that match. I just really enjoyed it. Uh, then there was a Hercules promo talking about Billy Jack Haynes and the Four Nelson is coming up at WrestleMania. There's an advert for WrestleMania 3. Um, next up is only a short match, but it's two very capable people again. Barrio and Junkyard Dog who JYD is obviously about to wrestle Harley Race any soon. 29th of March, this was. They said, it, it said, he advertised it as February, but they did say three weeks to Mania, so it must have been the start of March, it's not February. But yeah, it's all there and thereabouts, isn't it? What, 29th, 29th of what? March was Mania. Right, was okay. Mania. Um, and they said three weeks to WrestleMania, even right. though the... The, the YouTube video said February of 87 for this episode. But right. it was just like March, technically, wasn't it? But hey, what's fucking, what's three days between friends? Um, so Barrio takes the head. Um, off tackle, no sell. Barrio off the ropes. He leaps over JYD and lines JYD and it actually goes down. It shot me. Like right early on in the match, you know, dog's taking a bump. Uh, Barrio is in charge for a little bit. Um, he slams Junkyard Dog again, shot me, misses an elbow, but he's upright quick. His barrio and Junkyard uh, Dog sends his head to the buckle. Fucking barrio cuts him off and sends Junkyard Dog's head in. Uh, that's a mistake, isn't it? You don't send Junkyard Dog's head into fucking book. There's no cell there. Um, JYD head butts uh, barrio. And Barrio sounds like he's been fucking shot, which is brilliant. And then there's like a power slam finish. Junkyard dog over there. 
load of kids in the ring at the end dancing with Junkyard Dog, you're super over. Uh, mean Gene then with the local promo, who's fucking um, a town I've never heard of, but you know, it's obviously wherever this, this show was shown. Uh, but on this show, Junkyard Dog versus Kamala, uh, Paul Roma versus Steve Lombardi, C. V. Affey and S. D. Jones versus Orton and Morocco, Outback Jack versus Tiger Chung Lee, uh, Moondog Spot versus Seeker, and a main event which they'll announce later on. I mean, fucking hell, I'm there. Spot versus Seeker threw me as two heels, but hey ho. Um, there's a Heenan promo then talking about Harley Race, but Harley Race isn't there, clearly. But you know when they, they did the local promos? Heenan's sort of looking like this and he's like, go on, Harley, just speak to the people, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, no, he doesn't want to speak to you, blah, blah, blah. It's fucking brilliant. Um, me and Jean's then with Roddy Piper in an empty sort of arena set up talking about his retirement match and is he actually going to retire, yada, yada. And, you know, he says he is after wrestling Adonis. And then they show highlights of the match with Adonis from Saturday night's main event just before. Uh, there's a Hogan promo then, which probably went along the lines of brother and dude, uh, but I didn't really say that. Um, Jesse Ventura promo then. He's waiting at the back door of an arena somewhere, Jesse Ventura is, with his microphone, going, oh, there's loads of girls outside. It's going to be Adrian Adonis or some shit like this, right? And then it's the can connection. And he went, all those girls for you? Um, and so there wasn't really a promo. It was just him being shocked at the Canon connection being over. Uh, match number three with Mr. Fuji is Orton and Morocco versus uh, Salvatore Bolomo and Dave Studemeyer. It's anniversary of Sal Bolomo's death today. God rest him. Um, Dave Studemeyer, I've seen before, but know nothing about him. I just remember him from TV. Because he had, he had like uh, boots with fucking dangly bits on. So I remember them more than him, to be fair. Um, this shocked me really because. You know those matches where they have the sort of enhancement team, but one of them is has done stuff before, like yeah, Sal yeah. They normally look after him and shit all over the other one, don't they? Not in this case. It was no. all for Palomo getting battered, this was. Um, yeah. The other poor guy didn't really get a fucking look in. It was just a mugging. This was the only real squash as such on the whole show. Um, Sal and Orton start... Sal tackles uh, Orton, runs off the ropes. Orton puts his feet up like he's going to fucking whip him over, but he cartwheels, which looked pretty cool. Um, but Orton soon cuts him off. There's a fucking double line, and then they just fucking mug him for a little bit. Tag into Studemeyer. There's a Fuji promo on the screen. It's just a fucking mugging. Um, Studemeyer gets superplexed by Orton in the finish. Uh, that was that, was that really. Nothing wrong with it at all, but just... There's nothing to, you know, report. There's the snake pit then. You know, Jake Roberts' little fucking talk show with the yeah. Honky Tonk Man. Uh, honky Tonk Man saying everybody here wants to hear me sing, yada, yada. Um, and then just about, he's just about to sing and then he fucking hits Jake with a guitar. And this ain't no fucking Jeff Jarrett guitar. This is fucking full on guitar. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Fucking... Boosh, fucking, and the guitar don't break, he don't shout enough, and he just fucking hits him on the head. Um, yeah. He does it a few times, and that kind of, that that's WrestleMania match sorted, isn't it, then? Uh, there's a WrestleMania report with Mean Gene, so he goes through the whole card. Um, and then it's TV main event time, which is George the Animal Steel versus Butch Reed. Slicks with Butch Reed. There's a jump start. Uh, George South, uh, George South, I've put you here George Steele fires back. There's a Coco promo on the screen, obviously, because the Butch Coco thing at yeah. WrestleMania. It's just a fucking punch fest. This nothing else happens other than punches, but you expect it from them too, don't you? So it's not shit for that reason. Um, Butch Reed is selling really well, like he's fucking selling, it's brilliant. He's putting George Steele over, like, really well. Um, Slick tries to, um, Pop George Steele with his cane through the ropes. Mm -hmm. And George Steele chases Slick back and he goes back to the dressing room. And they're filming in the dressing room now. And Coco's watching the monitor in like gorilla position. And uh, <laughs> fucking Coco, don't become an actor, mate, because you're fucking going to ruin it. Like you're never going to get in a film. 
and <laughs> I was pointing at the screen. Right now, George Steele's gimmick was being fucking backward, weren't it? That was him, right? You yeah. Know, he just said, he said he like the Teddy Mine. Right? That's all he did. <laughs> you accepted that. Coco's gimmick was never being George Steele, but he talks to George Steele like he's George Steele. So he's looking at the fucking screen, pointing, going, Slick! Slick! <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be thick. That's George's gimmick. Don't worry about it. Anyway, ding, ding, ding. He gets counted out. Coco and George go back to the ring, where Slick is now back in the ring with uh, Butch Reed. Coco drop kicks Butch Reed off the top rope, pow, and um, fucking Slick and Butch Reed powder. Nothing to this match. It's all just fucking building the old Coco Butch thing in it. Which at the time, after, like, I've never seen anything like this before. This, you know, Butch Reed Coco build up. When you watch WrestleMania, you think it's a bit of a throwaway match, don't you? But clearly yeah. there was to it. And this is the first I've seen of it. So uh, the show finishes with Gene doing local promos with JYD for the main event of that local show that we were on about. Junkyard Dog on Piper versus Racing Adonis is the main event. Fucking hell, I'd go to that, no problem. But yeah, good fucking the time went forty four minutes or something. Went in seconds. Everything about it was entertaining. It has a little bit of everything, you know, the bullshit and gaga from George South. Of uh, George asking George South, George Steele <laughs> and, and Butch Reed. The tag match that was just a squash, the wrestling of, of Steamboat and um Chick Donovan. It was just a, a fucking full package and it was information on local show. If you were local and you were watching that and you didn't go fucking to that show, you were clearly a fucking mug. Um, brilliant. Yeah. Spot on. Sounds good. Oh, right. Take us to 92. 92 here. And so, right. Yeah. It's it. This one's from West Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, 22nd of March, 92. From the auditorium there. Two, it's two weeks before WrestleMania 8. Um, with Monsoon and... Uh, fucking... I've wrote Monsoon and Gorilla. Fucking Heenan. Fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Heenan and Gorilla. With their fucking... Good old Mike McGurk doing the fucking ring announcing. You know, so... <laughs> Beautiful. Um, there's quite a few matches on here. That like... Mal- I didn't mention, but Mal Phillips did my uh, my shows, ring announcing. I and uh, to watch Mal Phillips say Barry O's name, knowing of the whole suing situation, made you feel uneasy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's six, six matches on here. But unlike your show, they're all pretty, they're all fucking squashes. There's not even a main. Like the last fucking the last match is a squash as well, but watching it, I didn't really uh, I didn't really care that they're all squashes because it was so much fun to just watch and go back to that kind of period, and the whole build up to WrestleMania was fucking it explained everything. Like even if you're not a wrestling fan, in at that moment you're watching it, you get a gist of what the fuck is going on because they li- literally tell you everything. So we said that about USWA when we watched there, didn't we? Like, yeah, yeah. You know what's going on. And you need to, don't you? Because every day you could potentially have a fresh customer. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah. you can't expect people to know what's happening. And it's a lost art, I think, but good on them. Every promo says the date, every promo says the show name, the fucking name. You know, the work mm. Hang on. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. You're going a bit um, you're fucking going a bit crackly, but I think you're back. No, yeah, I'm all right. Right, right. Um, yeah, the first match is Davy Boy Smith against Bill Bad. Bill Bad, was he? B A Double D. Um, well, it was all a fucking. Obviously, you can imagine it being one sided. Uh. They do a tie-up. Davey fucking shows his strength a couple of times by pushing him off. They go into the old fucking screen in the corner for a promo, and it's the Berserker. Um, did the Berserker wrestle Davy Boy at WrestleMania 8? Yeah. No, he didn't, did he? 
They must have took that match off then, because I don't recall it. But was he even on WrestleMania eight at all? Either of them? I don't think they were. That's the thing. Like I don't recall that match happening at WrestleMania eight because I've what that was one of the oldest VHSs I own, and I watched it a million times. Like ain't seen it for years, but you know I don't recall that match. But Berserkers mm. talking. The only and, time uh, I remember was a uh, UK Rampage. And that would have been the year before, wouldn't it? 91. But yeah, Berserker's talking and Fuji's talking about Davy Boy and that was fucking it. So yeah, it confused me a bit that. But anyway, yeah, we go back into the match. Headlock by Bad. No relation to Johnny B. Um, um, yeah, Headlock by Bad. Shot off. Tackle. But Davy Boy don't budge. In bad hits the ropes again. Davy sleeps and gives him a big backdrop and an arm drag. Works on the arm a little bit. Hits him with one of his stalling suplexes. <laughs> it's all been fucking Davy boy. And then bad gets him with an eye rake. <laughs> Takes Davy to the corner. The only thing that you know, Mister Bad does is the eye rake. Usually the eye rake would work to a little bit of heat, but the eye rake didn't work to anything apart from getting fucked up. So um, he gave. <laughs> He gave Davy the eye rake, gets him in the corner. Davy switches the whip and then runs in with a massive line, then hits him with a Davy Boy slam. One, two, three. Uh, simple. It was a simple squash, um, but it, you know, it made Davy look fucking phenomenal. And this was '92, so like I've wrote here as well. After it, like I don't think anyone can question. Like this was Davy Boy in his prime, like literally like prime Davy Boy. Like he looked phenomenal. And the build-up to SummerSlam that year was fucking... I don't think Davey ever hit them heights. Like, again, like, that was fucking Davey, weren't it? Like, Yeah, that, 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 that's the first thing you think about when you think of Davey, isn't it? That night, yeah. that SummerSlam. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's had other fucking great matches throughout the years, but that's the one fucking moment. Not necessarily the match, it's just the fucking moment. Like, that was his fucking peak, weren't it? But, um... Yeah, so then after that, we go into uh, we go to Lord Alfred Hayes, who I fucking love Hayes. I, <laughs> I love his enthusiasm. Like, you know what I mean? He's just, <laughs> just the way he fucking... I can't help but laugh, but, like, he always, like... It's always better when our Hayes is there, I feel. I just fucking love watching him commentate, like, something about him. Yeah, he's talking about the uh, upcoming Invasion 92 video that they're going to be releasing, um, which I've got. Sorry, isn't it? Sean Michaels, hey. Ric Flair on it. Sean Michaels, Ric Flair on it. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, I've got what? that through there. Yeah. Because Shawn Michaels. Not, not uh, your fucking boy toy Shawn. Not your boy toy Shawn Michaels. Your rocker Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Fabulous. Um, yeah, they've got that. Um, yeah, they talk about that. Then he talks about WrestleMania 8. Um, they go to a bit. They go to a show recently where it shows Sid um, beating the fuck out of Virgil. Can you remember that? Fucked up no. his nose. Oh, is that why you had to wear the thing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, thing. Yeah, okay. Right, yeah. yeah, so um, there's, a, there's a bit where they're showing a clip of Sid. He just battered a fucking, like, a no-name guy. And then they're putting the, the no-name guy on the stretcher. And Sid's putting this fucking Hulkamania stuff on this guy because I guess he's got his beef with Hogan, because he's got Hogan at Mania. And then some faces come out and help the fucking guy on the stretcher. One of the faces happens to be Virgil, who ends up getting battered by Sid. So they go into that fucking... Uh... Then they go into a Sid promo, which was fucking actually pretty good, to be fair. Like, you know, really fucking menacing and, like, you know, real vicious type promo. Um, they go into a match number two now. Danny, Danny Camo. Never heard of him. K A M O. Never fucking heard of him. Danny Camo against Papa Shango. I love Papa Shango. I love that whole gimmick. Um, Shango, Papa Shango goes straight for him, beating the fuck out of him. Couple of whips into the corners. Big splash in the corner. Kablam. Fucking big slam, then an elbow drop. Kablam. Fucking whips him off. And then he does this weird fucking, don't know if you've ever seen it. Fucking right weird. I thought it was a botch at first. So what happens is. Papa Shango whips him off the ropes. Shango hits the other ropes. Comes running towards him. 
and it's like he's going for a fucking flying clothesline. But like, I don't even know how to explain it. But as Papa Shango's in midair, he kind of just grabs his head and spins it round, almost like he's jumped for a flying line. But he just kind of grabs his head, and the guy kind of takes a bit of a turn, and like it's a bit of a neck breaker type thing. Really weird. Like, but oh. look, look. Do, they, do they land frontwards? Job. I think. I, I think the guy landed. I think he landed on his back maybe maybe done like a 180 so he's running forwards but then goes like that on his back kind of thing as shango spins around with his neck really weird i'll have to watch it again because i don't know it was like i thought oh fucking hell that's a bit odd but no it looked all right so yeah hits that and then uh and then the massive you know when he's got him up for the big shoulder breaker bam on his knee and that's the finish a squash dominant made papa shango look fucking unstoppable who did he have at Mania? He'd done the running, didn't he? But yeah, he never... fucking pointless running. That was it. Yeah, Where when... he was late, wasn't he? When he late? Yeah, yeah, he was, wasn't he? Fuck knows. But yeah, mm. that was odd. Um, then they go to Sean Mooney talking about an upcoming show at the Boston Gardens. There's a Jake promo talking about Randy Savage because he's got him in a cage match at this Boston show. So he was talking about this upcoming cage match uh then they go to a randy promo which is as intense as you can get which you'd expect um and then at the end of the randy promo they go to this vignette which i'm guessing is nails because nails hadn't been seen at this point and it's somebody talking about the boss man but you don't see him you just hear like a voice and then even the announcers like what was that like who was that talking i'd assume it's nails because you know yeah yeah right Period, yeah, he was saying there's something about boss man and something about like I'm out now or something like that. So yeah, it would be nails. Um, then they go into a boss man match against Lee Armstrong. Oh, Lee Armstrong. Mm. From the world famous Lee family. <laughs> <laughs> fucking uh, this was a dominant squash as well. This was fucking boss man runs into him, knee, bam, strikes fucking here and there. Puts him on the rope and does that jumping thing on, you know, with the leg over the like back of the head thing. Fucking hits him with a boss man slam, three count, kablam. Fucking just like that, like a few minutes. Eh? Have some of that, Lee Armstrong. That's it. Um, then uh, then the, this was a pretty good segment. <laughs> mean Jean's walking by the river and he's like, uh, with all these boats. He's looking for Ric Flair. So, so he's, like, he's looking around like for Flair. And then there's a boat parked on the side. And he's like, oh, this must be it. And then fucking Kurt Ennig's walking to the top deck. He's like, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking Mean Gene walks in the boat and Flair's there. And um, <laughs> yeah, and then, so yeah, they get Gene to come aboard. Then Gene's... Uh, asking Flair about Liz, because this is around about the time of all them pictures in the magazine and shit. And then Flair's there just sitting down with Gene, showing him all these fucking uh, pictures with him and Liz and that, you know, adding to the angle. Um, the fourth match, oh, you'll like the fourth one, still a fair squash, but, you know, Bret the Hitman Hart, obviously not like the other wrestlers, Bret Hart's given the fucking enhancement guy some shit. So, you know... <laughs> Enhancement guy's fucking taking it from him. You are <laughs> the enhancement guy's just fucking taking it from him. <laughs> he don't want to do the job to this prick. It's actually he's actually against Dale Wolf on this one. Oh, so there we go. That's a so, uh, match, That's your main event right there. It fucking is. In fact, it's still it's still like fairly one sided. But like the start, whereas the the matches before has been the fucking the main guy, like just straight on him. And until the end, but this was like, this wasn't necessarily like that. Like tie up and the arm arm drag by Brett works the arm and stuff. Shot off and Brett tackles him. Dale sleeps. Brett reverses a hip toss and stuff. There's um, is a like a little bit back and forth with Dale trying to fucking get some shit in and that. Whereas like you know and Brett you know he does like sell it a little <laughs> a little bit and like the others. <laughs> okay. um, there's a there's there's a fucking uh 
I'll, um, I've put, I think there's a fucking, I've put Piper something in here. Piper, I think, oh yeah, Piper does the little promo in the top corner as well, obviously adding to their fucking WrestleMania thing that they've got going on. Um, and then, yeah, Brett hits the atomic drop, snapmare in the fucking elbow, backbreaker. Um, oh yeah, then he ends up fucking just, the backbreaker leads to the sharpshoot, and there we go. On. Very smooth match as well. Very fucking like it was one sided, but it wasn't as one sided as the others. And they seemed to fucking. It was like one of them matches where they just knew what was going on. Like, you know, it looked pretty smooth and crisp. Um, the next match is possibly the shortest match in the history of matches. Um, it's the Repo Man against Terry Davis. Wow. Um, I love me some Repo Man. So <laughs> this is the match, the whole match, and like literally the whole match. Repo attacks him, boom, chokes him in the corner, puts the leg grapevine on, he taps out. That's everything that happened in that match. So you've got to, you've got to get, when you're a Repo Man, you've got to get in there and out there with as little fucking, you know, hoo ha as possible. You know what I mean? It's the fucking job of the Repo, isn't it? <laughs> you got to sneak in. You got to sneak yeah. out. But like, the, hook the fucking put, car up. Get it gone. <laughs> he put the fucking uh, he put the leg grapevine on. And I thought, oh, here he goes. He's gonna work the leg for a little while. He fucking worked it all right because he tapped out there and then didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it was probably about twenty seconds long. The match, I reckon, something like that. But I'll, um, Terry, I'll have Terry Davis's match next. Uh, you know. TV, put me down for fucking, you know. Do you want to? Do you want to wrestle Sid? Yeah, put me down for Repo Man. <laughs> <laughs> Sid's actually in the main here. To be fair, um, it's it's not quite as short as the Repo Man one, but it's fucking not far off. But um, I do like the Repo Man gimmick, and I read somewhere or I watched somewhere where um, he almost fucking, he was almost a, a face, like he almost turned face, which was would have been quite. Interesting, but um, Barry Darso was like fucking talking, and he said that yeah, they tried to make him. I don't know exactly how they were doing it, but he, I did hear it, but I can't remember what he said. But yeah, just couldn't it imagine. Like, it seems like a strange gimmick to be a babyface, right? Because no fucker likes a repo man, do they? No one, because no. they're taking your shit away. Yeah, but the big boss man works. You know, the big boss man was a bastard that was worked in the prison when he first got there, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, yeah. yeah. He, he wasn't like a straight-faced, you know, straight-laced, standing up for the good fucking policeman. He was a cop. Mm. And it worked for him, so who knows? Yeah. But yeah, it would I, have been I mean, who likes a fucking undertaker popping around your house? <laughs> yeah? But all of a sudden, everybody loves the undertaker. Oh, I can't wait for the man that's going to fucking bury me nan to pop round. You know, <laughs> it's bullshit, isn't it? Yeah. But it, it just worked. Fucking, the wrestling fans are fucking idiots, aren't they? <laughs> um, then we go to Sean Mooney again, plugging the Boston show. Al Matador, Al Matador talking about the IRS. He must have just turned to Al Matador, like now, because he was Tito at WrestleMania 7. And obviously at eight, he's on Matt Door, so it must have been not long before then. But yeah, he's talking about IRS, who he's got uh, at this Boston show. Shawn Michaels is talking about Virgil, who he's got at the Boston show. Then fucking Virgil does a promo, which was probably a bad idea because it was fucking god-awful. This, this shows that Shawn Michaels has got no stroke in 92. <laughs> <laughs> a few years later... Fucking Virgil just wouldn't have happened, would it? Yeah. Yeah, he's talking about Virgil. Then Virgil's talking. Um, Virgil's talking with that big white fucking thing on his face. It looks like a fucking tampon or something. It looks, it looks hideous. Like box, doesn't it? it looks fucking, you know, like an egg box if you cut the eye holes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looked, uh, he's talking, he's trying to be serious. And he just babbles on and babbles on. I'm like, are you fucking finished yet? Like, you know, he just, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about, to be honest. Um, he just rambled on. He looked an idiot, to be fair. 
you couldn't take any cunt like that serious. So, um, yeah, then we move on to Mean Gene talking about WrestleMania 8. Hulk does the promo talking about Sid. Then they go to Randy talking about Flair's photos with all the fucking blood vessels in his fucking cranium bursting. Like, Randy's going nuts. Fucking. Uh, and then Jake does a promo about Undertaker. And then Taker and Paul Bearer finish off with doing a promo themselves. Um, here we go. Main event time. Sid Justice against the one and only Dennis Blunt or Bunt. Dennis Bunt, that's the fucker. Dennis Bunt. Mm. That's a worthy main event, huh? Yeah, well, it was interesting because he he looked like um he looked like a bunt. <laughs> it, it was kind of <laughs> cause like usually when I'd watch these shows. They would have like the main as a name against the name, maybe. Yeah. But they ended on this, which was like the biggest squash of the lot, I think, apart from the Repo Man one in record Especially time. If you're that close to a, a show that big, you don't you don't even want to give them the fucking opening match of WrestleMania, do you? You, you want to give them fuck all. I mean, that that's good psychology, I think. Well, I, like I was saying earlier, like I enjoyed the show. From like front to you know right from the front to the end, it was like a really enjoyable show, and they kept going to Sean Mooney or Mean Gene or wherever they're going to to talk about what mm. was upcoming. So it kept my attention the whole way through the show, it, because like the fucking bits in between were more important than the actual wrestling itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it had me like fucking Aaron. If I lived in Boston, I'd have been there. Like the matches are almost a reminder of the people that you're talking about for those that don't know them, innit? Like we're on about the new customers that come through the door mm. or, you know, someone that hasn't seen it for a while. It's all, you know, at WrestleMania, we're going to have fucking Papa Shango. Uh, I know, I'm, I'm surmising because we know he went there. But, uh, and people are like, who the fuck's Papa Shango? Uh, and then, then they've got, you know, 90 seconds to jog their memory. It's fucking genius. Then they've got fucking Berserker talking about going to Mania, wrestling Davey. If you're yeah. watching it, like, oh, I'm gonna watch it for that fucking match. <laughs> it's, fucking... <laughs> it's not even on the fucking. Would but, anyone um, really watched anything for a fucking berserker match? Well, I don't mind me some berserker to be fair, but I wouldn't fucking go for yeah. him specifically. You buy, you buy a WrestleMania for it though. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I really like the bits in between and stuff. But um, yeah, so Sid just batters him, hits him with a fucking. That front slam, a bit like the Alabama slam thing, but um, not quite as fucking over. He's literally like from a front and front bit. He just slams him down. Um, fucking puts his foot on his throat, chokes him on the ropes. Um, then they cut to a... Uh, oh, yeah, then they cut to fans talking about Hulk and Sid. So, like, in the top corner, instead of a promo, they're going around fans asking them, like, you know, about Hulk and Sid, everyone's saying Hulk's going to win and all the rest of it. Um, then he hits a big power power bomb for the three count. Sid batters him after the match, throws him, fucking gets him on a stretcher. Fuck me. So they're down the fucking ramp. He's pushing him down back to the dressing rooms, turns round, pushes the stretcher right into the fucking ring, smashes right into the ring post. How he never killed him, I have no fucking idea. He might have done, to be fair. But fuck you now. I was, I was watching thinking, Oh, and Sid didn't give a fuck. He literally just didn't give a fuck. He just... No, no one's heard of Barry Blunt since, though, or whatever his fucking name is. Well, that's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Bunt. Yeah. Dennis Bunt. Fucking Dennis dead by the looks of it. I tell you, that looked fucking horrible. But yeah, that was it. That was the uh, the last match. Uh, they finally go to Sean Mooney. Mountie promo, talking about Brett, because they've got each other at Boston Gardens. Then they go to a Bushwhackers promo talking about Nasty Boys because they're wrestling them at Boston. And that's what wraps it up. Fucking brilliant show. That's the, the finish of it. But fuck me, it was good. It was really, really enjoyable. Yeah. If I had never watched WrestleMania, like, and I was a kind of a new fan to wrestling and watched this, I'd go and fucking get WrestleMania or go on the network and watch WrestleMania 8 just because, you know what I mean? It's, it's a perfect shop window. They've put over WrestleMania. They've made you buy that. <laughs> They've put over the local show. They've made you buy a ticket. They've put over the individual wrestlers of WrestleMania and wrestling in general. 
So you're going to go and buy a Davy Boy T-shirt because you were happy with his performance, or you're going to become a fan of these people. It's a perfect shop window, isn't it? And that's what they do. That's what you see. Like, that's what I liked about that fucking era as well, is, like, they give you they give you enough to want you to see more. They don't fucking give you a all. Yeah, You're just up. enough. Yeah. They don't fucking give you everything, um, like, fucking a million pay-per-views a year and shit like that, because, you know yeah. what I mean? And, like, a fucking... I, I, I like water, but if you water it too much, it just... It dies the same as having none, doesn't it? You know, and I think now wrestling is so accessible. There's 47 shows a fucking week, all at 15 hours long. It's over water in wrestling, isn't it? Yeah. You know but, I mean? yeah. And it, I think it, in a way, as good as the Monday Night Wars were, it's it was directly fucking because of that that is what we've got now. Because when they were competing and then adding the pay-per-views every fucking month, they went from four or five to like fucking ending up having one a month. And now yeah. they have more than one a month. And it's literally, it started at that period, really. Oh, when they were. The TV became exactly the same quality as a pay per view. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say as well. You're not but looking, the, the pay per views don't mean as much. Psychology there just isn't the, right. Because, like, if you're getting, I'm just throwing two names. You're getting Triple H and Randy Orton, right? I'm just fucking throwing two names, not specifically saying them, but. If you're getting Triple H and Randy Orton on fucking Monday night trying to sell you the pay-per-view with the same fucking match on the week after, what are you going to fucking do? Yeah. And then, you, and then you see stuff as well, like fucking, I've known in the past, I don't watch it now, but like I've known like there'd be two guys on a pay-per-view, then they'd have the rematch on Raw the next night. And it's yeah. like, I've just watched that last night and I paid fucking so much for it and whatnot. And it's like, well... It, you know. it, it doesn't seem like the ratings battle seemed far more important than actually making any money and getting any customers. No, yeah. it, how many people watch it on TV? Does that really earn you any fucking money? I'll get, I'll get through the advertisers and that kind of thing, but they're not getting shit numbers anyway, so even the losers weren't getting shit numbers. So that you're still going to be able to sell adverts. Yeah. Surely you should be getting the people to buy the pay per view or go to the fucking show. Ah, right, what do I know? Fuck no. Anyway, Wrestling Challenge is a winner. It is um, a massive winner. Uh, it's your show pick next week. Where are we time traveling to? <laughs> wow. Wait till you hear this fucker. I could give you fucking 10 weeks to fucking guess and you wouldn't get a fuck. You wouldn't guess this fucker. So what what we're going with? We're going with I fucking I've YouTubed it as well to make sure there's some available because I didn't want to just fucking say this obscure fucking shit and it doesn't exist on YouTube or Google. I had to fucking do a little bit of research just to make sure it's accessible. So it definitely exists. It's not something you've just made up in your head. No, nah, well I thought I wasn't sure. You know, I, I I I thought of it in my head and I thought I just need to Google this to make sure it actually exists and it's not my fucking mind. So anyway, we're going. To Hawaii for Polynesian Pacific Pro Wrestling. Fucking hell, you're right. I would never have guessed. <laughs> was, was, that not, was that not something to do with the rocks, uh, Granddad? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Peter Meyer Veers. Like, it's been running, I think, since the 30s or 40s. And as far mm. as I'm aware, it looks like it's still running today. It, it was called like 50th State Wrestling or some shit like that. I don't, I don't know quite now. But we'll look into I think it more. that might. That might be what it's called now. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I'm not really knowledgeable of it. Um, but I think it was called Pacific. From my understanding, it was Pacific Pro Wrestling, like Polynesian Pacific Pro or something like that. But looking at it now, I think it's called 50th State. or I'm sure that's what it's... But apparently it's still running today because it said like vac um, current champion and all that lot. But and it said founded in like nineteen fucking forty or thirty or something like that. So, but yeah, it was NWA affiliated. Mm. But yeah, well, it should. I like yeah. a bit. Of, I like a bit of different. It will be all right. I don't know how many full episodes are there, but I know there's videos that are like forty odd minutes long. So even if you just watch a couple of matches or whatever, see what you well, find. Yeah. But yeah, if not a full video, like four matches, job's done, isn't it? Same deal, then, isn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, Friday, Ricky Morton tag, Ricky 
Martel tag matches. Monday, Jesse Barr. Wednesday, Hawaii. Bosh. Boom. See you then.